The Asclepius Dialogue, translated by Maxwell Lewis Layton. Chapter 1. Mercurius Trismegistus' Dialogue, from the translator, the Platonic philosopher, Lucius Apuleius of Medaulus. The mind spoke. Asclepius is a god to me, on behalf of the sun, a god that led us, you, O Asclepius, so that you might take part in the divine discussion and are of such a kind as him, who with the worth of all the deeds before us, or our divine noumenal power being inspired. If it might seem as though you are more divine in religious piety than the understanding you would see, you will be very full of all good things from the entire mind. If, however, there would be many good things, all those things are not in one place. Having distinguished one concordance from another, to be all of one, or one is to be all. So it is, for example, having connected one thing to another, in order that one cannot be separated from the other. Yet, concerning the impending discussion, you will study with the intention of being careful in this. Truly you, O Asclepius, must proceed a little bit, and a who could assist us. Then, having gone ahead, you must evoke spirits. Asclepius even suggested you are to assist Ammon. Trismegistus affirms that no envy holds Ammon back from us, if indeed I remembered many things attributed to his name that you had written for us, as even to a most loving and dearest son, many books about physics, and just as many crammed with exotic subjects. However, I would describe handling this tract to you, to your name, Sclopius. In truth, you must summon no one else apart from Ammon, lest a most religious discussion has many people arriving to intervene in such a matter, and the present circumstances are disturbed. On the contrary, the matter having been fully handled with all the majesty of divine power, the discussion is not to be made public to someone of impious mind with a guilty conscience and made known to many people. Even the shrine with that sacred man, Ammon, had moved forwards, and the four of the men from the divine religion of God had finished this way. Things are by coinciding reverently with silence, from the mouth of Hermes, with the souls and minds of individuals hanging on. So, commencing, the divine Cupid is to speak. Trismegistus said, O oh, Asclepius, every human soul is immortal, but not all uniformly together, yet some have a better way about them than others do. In time, Asclepius said, Certainly not, O oh, Trismegistus, every soul is of one quality. Trismegistus said, O oh, Asclepius, as you had quickly learned about the true limits of reason, I hadn't said that everybody is to be one, and one is everybody, as everybody which had been in the Creator beforehand, everybody would have been created. He is not said to be unworthy in everything, which all limbs are, and so are of him, who is one, and all things, or the actual Creator of all things. Bear in mind in this whole careful debate that all of it descended from heaven to earth, and into the water, and into base metals. Fire, which alone is carried upwards, is alive. What descends devotes it to the earth, but in truth, whatever is from above comes down and generates what shoots up, nourishing the earth's soil, falling on to it. She who receives is of all things, and she who restores accepts all races. Therefore, from this whole, just as you brought to mind, which is of all things, or is all things, the soul and the world are forcibly moved from nature, binding them together. So the many forms of all the images have equal degrees of quality, 
to the extent that the species that exist become acquainted with them, possess an infinite amount of qualities from the space in between them. However, all unite to this end, that all things could have seemed to be like one entirety collective and from one source. Therefore, the whole world is formed, from which the four elements are fire, water, earth, and air. There is one world, one soul, and one God. Now you must have all your wits about you for me. How great you bid farewell with the mind, how greatly skilled you are with the astuteness of divinity. If indeed divine reason must be learnt, it is with attention to the senses, which is almost identical to a torrential river, from leaning over a very high precipice, where, from coursing with rapacity, reason is made. That our intention is not only about handling audiences themselves, but even time should pass very quickly.